Got a new uh, T-copter design that we're using for FPV or um, aerial video. Um, obviously, it's kind of like a tricopter, but it's got no motors in the front of it, so you can video from the top. I'll show you the setup in a few minutes with the actual camera on it. Somehow know this since I'm actually filming with that camera. But um, either way, the uh, show you how it flies. A couple things you want to do with a normal FPV setup is doing things like that, obviously, because um, they're just not designed to do that. Um, with four cells, it's extremely strong. It's got tons of vertical. So going fast is not a problem. Um, we're running it right now at the RC timer motors. I do have some sunny sky motors that are a little more powerful, a little more efficient, and I'll throw those up now. So we'll see that. Okay, this one's my own personal one. The one I just flew is actually a client's. Uh, I was just kind of test flying it for him. Um, this one's got the sunny sky uh, 1400 kV, uh, 2212 motors on it. Uh, they're very, very powerful. Um, very quiet. This is also has a uh, flashed um, Simon K speed controllers on it. And uh, let's give you an idea what this one can do. Man, I was still... oh, that's not Take it down the road a second, get some speed runs with it. That didn't work out. <sighs> yep, tough little sucker, isn't it? Let's try it again. It's kind of tight in here. It's kind of hard to really get it up in full throttle, but you can see it really does cook. So if you're in an open field, you can really open it up and The advantage of something like this over a um, octocopter or something that's really high dollar, very expensive, is you know obviously you saw I just skidded on the ground at about 50 miles an hour and it didn't even break a prop. That's a little unusual, but uh, you can carry a GoPro. You couldn't carry a digital SLR with it. Um, you can carry FPV equipment. You can carry uh, OSD equipment. Plenty of power for that, obviously. Um, but, you know, you have something you can actually go out there and learn how to fly FPV on as opposed to something you're worried you're going to crash and, and, and cause hundreds of dollars of damage. I mean, this little guy, if you break an arm, you can go to Home Depot and you can buy a new arm, uh, drill it out, and you're back in business. Um, I don't know. It's just a, there you go, a little competition up there. Um... So it's dead steady, it's smooth. And the advantage, of course, with a, uh, a yaw motor, a servo in the back for yaw is that you have very precise yaw control. Not that you'd be doing that FPV, but 
you get the idea. Tri uh, quadcopters, octocopters, you know, they can do slow maneuvers, but they can't really, you know, just zip around really fast on things like that. You get the idea. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty smooth. And uh, with all this real estate on top, you got plenty of room for camera, put your battery in the back, uh, OSD, uh, transmitter. Now, I'll shoot a little footage with this one while I got it on hooked up. I'll throw it on the uh, on there and try it out. But lots of room in this thing. the idea smooth wire um, you can see where everything kind of mounts you got plenty of room GPS you can um, put a lot of uh, stuff on the board I usually fly the tricopter but we just didn't have enough room to put all the uh, the fun stuff on there and um, so we kind of came with this idea so if you're interested in purchasing one of these frames uh, give me an email at matt hall at bellsouth.net m-a-t-t-h-a-l-l at bellsouth.net and I think they're going to be around 39 bucks, 39, 40 dollars in that area. They, take, they do take a little bit more time to build, and they're also some more material. But um, all the wiring and all the speed controllers are nice and hidden, so it's a, a prettier setup. The tricopter still is more fun to fly, but this is a little smoother for video, and you don't have the props in your video when you're flying. So this really works better for FPV and not incredibly crazy stuff. But you can flip it, you can roll it, but um, it's a little bit slower on some of the things, so... Um, buddy of mine came up and setting the actual board inside here. Um, I thought it was a brilliant idea. And uh, also, when you set the receiver in here, you've got a little bit of space over the top of the deck, which you can kind of see here in this setup on the on one of the prototype that's built. But I just want to show you what you would actually be receiving um, if you decide to purchase one of these. Um, everything comes off, but we'll show you on the actual prototype. But I'm actually mailing this one out in about 10 minutes, so I want to go ahead and video it before I go mail. So. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to get down to the insides of this little bad boy. I've already kind of pre-taken it apart and detached a lot of things. Um, everything fits down inside of here. It's all protected. It's all covered. And then when you get done, I mean, you obviously have a, a quite a massive deck to put your camera, uh, OSD equipment, or a, you know GPS, anything like that. And battery goes in the back here. It can actually go over the, the receiver a bit here and, and run for this whole section. Um, all the wiring is internal on it. So you got your power wires and your speed controllers all inside of here. Um, something I kind of like is the, uh, the way I did the uh, speed controller here. 
hookups and it's basically um, two female or two male whichever one you want to do and hooked with a small piece of wire between the two of them and then soldered in like that it's kind of a compact way of doing it and uh, it's very efficient with your with your space so basically front two speed controllers rear speed controller receiver board uh, satellite receiver and I'll start putting it together and show you how we zip tie the arms on and all that stuff. Um, if any of you guys are familiar with the uh, cheap easy tricopter, I'm using the same basic setup for the the rear for the uh, yaw rotation as we do on the cheap easy tricopter. It's a little bit a little bit shorter arm in the back because you got a longer fuselage in the front here. All right, still got to tighten up the, uh, the arms a little bit and neaten up the wires, but basically we have a very um, large platform to fly with, uh, lots of room for equipment, not terribly dangly on the wires, and uh, it's, uh, again, in a crash, you'll, you'll take the arm and it'll, it'll come back. Of course, when we tighten this up, it won't be so easy to do that with, and um, it makes a great little flying platform. Uh -huh. 